Here we are again, another conversation with somebody that I find interesting and hopefully you'll find interesting too. His name is Pierre Duplessis. And let's say good morning to you, Pierre. Good morning, Stuart. It's great to speak to you again. Is it true that we met 10 years ago for the first time? Yes, it is. Uh, I realized this the other day. I was actually I took my daughter this morning. It's like, oh, I'm doing a thing with Stuart. And I met him 10 years ago when I did my my first TEDx talk in Soweto in that beautiful theater, if you remember. I do. And I, I remember being fascinated as an audience member by you because I heard a word that I hadn't heard before. I thought it was, it looked like a French word, flaneur. You pronounce it differently. Tell me more about that. Yeah, flaneur. So flaneur. So I used to, I mean, I still call myself flaneur from time to time, but I used to, I used to call myself a flaneur. So a flaneur is a sort of a character that emerged, I think, in about 18th or 19th century in France. And it's basically an observer. So somebody like Oscar Wilde or like Mark Twain or so would be a flaneur. So somebody that like strolls around the streets of Paris and sits at cafes and watches people, watches the world go by. And I really like that as a metaphor because it's a large part of what I do, what I still do, is observe. I observe where the world is going, what's happening, how people behave, how they react, how businesses are dealing with all of this chaos and how they plan a way forward. Like all of that still ties into that word, even though I don't use it as often anymore because it's too confusing for too many people. And what, what did that, what did that, how did that take you into business? How did that start your journey to where you are today? And we'll discuss that, obviously, in a few minutes. Yeah, so I think my story, the Flaneer story, uh, about 10 years ago, I started doing um, speaking, or maybe more than 10 years ago, maybe 10, 20 years, 20, 10, 15 years ago, started doing more speaking, um, speaking things. And my journey has always been one of sort of creativity and really being very observant about what is going on in the world. So and then writing and communicating about it, right? Which is why we're a speaker. So my journey started in design, fashion design specifically, and then in the late 90s. And then from there, sort of progressed into advertising, marketing, creative direction, art direction, all which need this like keen sense for spotting trends and um, observing uh, society and the culture and business. And then eventually I sort of moved into product development and from their brand development and all those things sort of interact. And eventually that led me to where I am now, where I work mostly with strategy, with um, sort of, you know, various businesses and helping them to figure out, like look at the world and observe and see what's happening and then look at their own story and then map a way forward and uh, figure out who they are in that space. So all of those, my old like creativity and fashion design tricks and my keen sense for observing and all of those things coming to play into the work that uh, we're doing now most of the time, yeah. And <clears throat> the last time, the most recent time when we worked together, you were kind of chairing a two or three day conversation with a group We won't it doesn't matter who they are. It's not relevant and it would probably be inappropriate. But you were, you were, uh, you know, I don't want to reveal them, you know, without their permission. But yeah, no. you were, you were kind of facilitating the conversation in order to be able to get to the solutions that they probably yeah. had, but didn't know how to arrive at. And, yeah. and it was interesting for me. And, you know, thank you for letting me sit in on it. So it was about, I don't know, 10, 12 guys. Um, I think some ladies and we were and they were all kind of heads of their divisions within this group. And mm. what I found fascinating was how they knew each other so well, but they didn't know how to get the answers out of what their different skill sets were to achieve their goals. And yeah. yet uh, we brought in another another speaker and suddenly it changed the dynamic in the room. Why was that? Yeah, so I think that's part of my uh, gift, really, to facilitate conversations like that. So that specific conversation with that business, it was a business that grew very rapidly in 10 years, and they've come to a place where um, it's very, it's, it, it becomes very confusing and very tricky because as businesses grow, they, they tend to develop all these little tendrils and weird little things that made sense at the time. But now you're sitting with this very weird hybrid monster thing 
and you need to kind of figure out where you know where to go next and so what so what i do is then facilitate a conversation a strategy session with them that is a process that lasts about a week or two weeks actually and that the two days that you joined was the center of the of the of the process where we connect dots for them so we look back and reflect back on their story so reflection is a really big deal for me it comes from my um sort of academic side and my kind of philosophy and spirituality side if you want to use that word where reflecting is the superpower to look at your life like you know look at your life look at your business and think through it and then connect the dots and what often happens in sessions like that or with businesses really is they're too close to the problem like they're too close to their own mess really and they can't see the woods for the trees so what I do is I take them out and then we take a bird's eye view and bring in other speakers and experts and people that could address whatever the industry they're in and then help them to figure out a way forward help them figure out like who they are what have they learned from their history um and then in, in sort of strategy for me is like always sort of retrospective really so you look back at your history realize this is who i am this is our passion this is what we wanted to create in the first place this is what worked now what do we see in the future so we do both so and in that way, we kind of build this new picture for them to say, this is who you are. This is where you want to go. And um, yeah, so my gift is really like connecting the dots. One of my um, friends, he's a startup founder and uh, he calls me like a divinator. He's like, you can, you're like one of those old school guys that like read the signs in the sky and then you go, okay, but this is, you know, this is where we should go. The birds are telling me that we should do this. But um, and it comes down to observing, really. Again, like the old Flaneer term was like observing and just saying, "But this and this, have you guys noticed that these two things match?" Or you said this and you said that, and these two things are actually really good thread for you. So um, yeah, that's what that session was. And, it is, um, it's interesting because for me, as as an observer, um, and and I had to keep my mouth shut, which was you know also a challenge. But it <laughs> it it was such an opportunity for me to see the delicate way that you had to deal and and bringing in bringing in an outside you know uh, expert also they were probably all on best behavior but you could you could the 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 tensions the little tiny tensions and the obvious signs that they might have been head banging or head bumping going on previously that came to the surface and somehow you've got to try and steer the way to get mm -hmm. them to see each other and not, yeah. you know, put up a wall. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a, um, so for the past about, sure, I think it's about 10 years or so, I've been facilitating retreats as well and learning from my, kind of one of my mentors in the retreat space. So where we help individuals figure out what they want to do in their life. Right? So try and discern Perfect. and, what am I supposed to do next? And that the the techniques and the practices that we use in retreat spaces to hold those spaces where everybody can hear, when everybody can speak, everybody's voice is heard, where there's real true self sort of inquiry and introspection can happen. It's those same practices that I've learned in the last kind of 10 years or so that I bring into a business space. And uh, without it becoming like too fluffy or too kind of ish or all of that kind of stuff. But the the real kind of hardcore gut talk needs to happen. And with that group was interesting because they are like, it's a very hardcore industry and they are a very bunch of hardcore people. They are not kind of soft and singing songs and that kind of, they were not that at all. But even with them, we managed to, with like Mazzuli and I, my assistant for that for that session, like managed to hold that space for them so that they can be vulnerability, they can be open and honest conversations and fights and disagreements and bumping heads and not like nice little HR fights, like proper, like proper fights, which is good. And then there's techniques and practices and things that we use to kind of process that and to facilitate that. So I'm glad you picked that up because I think that's what makes the way we do it a little bit different. I think I also think that it's interesting the makeup. I looked, yeah. You know, I, th I guess I'm also a real observer. I mean, my favorite thing is sitting down on a pavement cafe anywhere in the world, and gee whiz, you suddenly realize it's half a day later and you're still there. It, it's just one of the greatest, one of the greatest joys in my life. Mm. Sitting watching them, not knowing them, not knowing the history, not knowing the background, it was 
it wasn't as diverse a group as I would have thought from a cultural perspective. Um, I'm just wondering, I think that group got together from a bunch of individuals who had interest in certain things and they suddenly, they found that there was enough for them to get on with. To what mm. extent is that cultural mix important um, and are businesses perceived as being exclusive if there isn't the kind of diversity that we, you know, that we're seeing much more and more, thank goodness, these days, I mean, how is it limiting in terms of the way they said their, their clients perceive them? Or is it it's just a chemistry that happened naturally? And that's why it's working. It's a that's a very interesting discussion and question. Like for me, um, diversity for diversity's sake is almost never a good idea. It's it's really interesting when a business becomes it becomes sort of colorblind or culture blind and really invests in people that are talented and that can deliver the deliver the goods, right? And that sort of that group was it was sort of very, very uniform. And it's also, I think that's the nature of that industry, the way um it's an industry, for example, that mostly men are drawn to. And that's just the nature of it. So I don't think there's an intent to exclude or include or to have this like intentional kind of diversity policy. But I think there's a there's a beauty that happens when people notice the gifts that different people can bring and how those gifts can then amplify their team and their business. And when they stop looking for diversity, but they rather start looking for the specific gifts that they need or pers perspective. So some of the other teams we've worked with are incredibly diverse, but that business needed it because they need the different cultural perspective in order to deliver. Where this business didn't really need that because what they do without revealing it is, is extremely specific in an extremely like, narrow, narrow industry. And it just so happens that normally, mostly, mostly men are attracted to that type of work. So it's like a, it's like a, it's a, it's an interesting tension to, to navigate, like to where do you look and what is your, what is your real intent here? Like, what do you actually want to, want to create? Do you want to create a nice facade or do you want to actually have people that bring the gifts that are necessary to do it? And what are those gifts and where will you find them best? So that's, That's really question. good. Yeah. As a kind of wrap up, what are you finding in business today? What what what's working in South Africa? Are they are they are they sea changes? Are they gentle shifts? What what's working in the economy considering our unique place in the world? But you know, everywhere every country's got a unique place in the world. What is what's what's happening in business today? that's resonating, why will that company succeed or not succeed? What is it? Or I guess it's a sum of all the individuals and I'm sure there'll still be much more, you know, bumping and arm wrestling. But yeah. in the end, I definitely had a sense after that, that short session that I was able to observe that there was definitely a finding, a much more of a finding of each other and more respect. I definitely thought that, you know, some of the guys who would, you know, love to jump over the bar and uh, let go would uh, it was definitely more mellow and more inclusive of each other's opinions yeah yeah it's a uh, that's a really interesting question it's like what is what is the secret sauce what makes south african businesses work or what's um what's powerful right now so what i notice is south africans are incredibly i mean this is an overused word resilient but um, incredibly resilient and incredibly creative and innovative, like incredibly, like this, the things that people are building are, are just profound. Like it's things that just blow my mind. Like this is something that's coming from South Africa and it's absolutely beyond world-class, like in an absolute league of its own. So there's a, there's a, there's a tenacity and a drive that is, that, that I find rare in the world, uh, in the other businesses and the, I do some work in the US and a little bit in the EU as well. So that I don't find there that I find here, there's that intense like drive going, we're, we're going to muscle our way through this and do it. So that's beautiful and intense to me. And I think businesses that can harness that and don't get bogged down in red tape and sort of policies and everything actually does we do really well. And the other part is like, it's something that I deeply believe is always 
who before what. So who is greater than what. And businesses in South Africa that get that so the, the idea is that you don't need to be so concerned about what you're going to build. The product will always change. So me coming from like product development and design and all of that, the product always changes. And when you, especially when you're a startup or younger business or even older businesses as well, what you do is going to change. It's not going to be the same thing from now in five or 10 years time. But who is way more important? The who is on the team. So you always need to think about who is on the team? And then what are we going to build? And businesses who get that order on that I've noticed in South Africa, they tend to win. And it's the same thing. Like It's a story the Springboks teach us all, right? Who, the team, is massively important, more important than the individual. And then, then you go and you go and you play the game. So the values and the culture and that sort of team dynamic matters a whole lot before you figure out what to do. And then you can figure out together what to do. So who is always greater than what? And businesses that get that actually go very far and accomplish quite a bit. And when you're not sitting in those boardrooms facilitating strat sessions, you're still on the speaking circuit. What what What's hot in your mind with audiences these days? What are you talking about? So um, there's a... Excuse me. There's a couple of things that I'm uh, that I'm speaking about mostly. Mostly, I'm speaking about strategy because that's the core of our work. So, and then it's one talk. I always have weird titles for my talks, as you know, Stuart. Always, so, yeah. I, uh, my 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 strat talk now is called "Kill Your Darlings," and it's about <laughs> it's about this idea that often businesses, like I said, you know, develop these trend little tendrils and all these little ideas and these little precious things. And you have to sit down with your team and then be brave enough. That's the name of our business, funny enough. Like you have to be brave enough to then take out, take take your little darling that you love a lot, but it's not serving the business. It's actually not serving you. It's actually distracting. And you have to take it to the shed in the back and do what is what needs to be done. Like you need to like take it out, right? And then in that talk, I take people through a very high level idea of, of, of strategy, like the three kind of main parts that you kind of need to do with your team to actually get to a very clear and a unique strategy. So what you need to what you need to clarify, what you need to cut out, and then what you need to create. So I take people through those three things. So talk about strategy. I still talk a lot about chaos. Um, you know, it's a sort of continuing topic, talking about change, how to deal with chaos, and uh, and about teams. That's the other one that keeps on coming up. I did one yesterday as well, like on the talk is called teams to tribes and it's just what makes a good team you know like how, how do they form how do we think about those things and then talking about culture and talking about trust and the, those type of topics because strategy is like if you can have the best strategy in the world but if you don't have a team that can execute it like it's worth nothing so who is greater than what right so that same principle a principle applies so i talk quite a bit about that as well well, you're a busy guy, and thank you for finding time to chat with me today. Pierre Duplessis, nice to see you, and we'll catch up again soon. Great. Thank you, Stuart.